Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode with the Richmond Kickers Coaches Corner, where we put two soccer coaches in the same virtual space, and we see what happens. Joining me again today after a little bit of a break is head coach and sporting director of the Richmond Kickers, Darren Sawatsky, and as always, my name is Will Selden. Darren, welcome back. How are you? Good to talk to you, Will. It's good to see you, man. It's been a while. Good to see you, too. Um, so I guess the big news, coming straight into it, is, is the USL put out their statement about a provisional start date. So what are your initial thoughts on that? Well, one, we we support the USL and their, their, their medical professionals that are uh, uh, looking toward uh, a start date for our games and competition. I know the the guys are chomping at the bit, no different than any of the other teams. So uh, we're looking forward to a, a competitive start, however that comes together. Yeah, for sure. So what does that kind of like ramp up process look like for y'all? Because I know – you know, we had a little bit of preseason before this whole thing started, but you kind of got to get going again. So how does that how does that work for you all? Uh, well, it's very interesting because when you say you all, I would say that's the Richmond Kickers, which is actually much different than some of the USL Championship and uh, League One teams. Uh, we're all very uh, cognizant and respective of our local uh, health authorities. And as it relates to us, Richmond's not completely open to uh, larger group training. Uh, the USL opened it up to 10 people or less in training groups this past week, but we in Richmond are still in uh, really ind individualized training because we're trying to protect our players and staff. So, you know, when when the health authorities say that uh, it's okay, then we'll we'll move into bigger groups. And uh, as of yet, uh, there's no contact training in the USL. So, you know, we're it's good to see the guys and it's good to train, but uh, you know, to answer what that looks like, I think it's a an evolving uh, staircase and. We're on step one, where maybe others are on step three and four right now. That's super interesting. So I know that different leagues across the world, soccer and otherwise, are at different points, obviously, in their kind of revamping process. But if you're still in kind of individualized training, how does that work? I mean, are you are you guys out of the field from 830 in the morning till five o'clock at night or how does that work? Yeah, you know, uh, we're very lucky that uh, the city of Richmond works with us and, and we have City Stadium as a home base. Uh, it gives us a facility that's pretty contained, you know, it's, it's semi-private where we're the ones, the only ones that really use it. So we're lucky, you know, we're not renting from somebody per se. Uh, but yeah, in order to, to work in four man groups, uh, you know, with one coach at a time at the four, you really, it, you're out there a long time. I mean, we get in and set up at nine and, you know, we go until the guys are, are completely serviced. So we're there most of the day and, it's a heck of a lot better than sitting on your couch and watching Netflix, at least for me. I'm not a, I don't sit well. So being out on the field is, is good. Uh, you know, and the hard part is there's no, there's no tactical reference in a four man group. It's very difficult. I mean, it's position specific, but you know, giving them constraints as it applies to the game is difficult with really small numbers. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about kind of working with what you have for a lot of these episodes. And I guess this is a situation where you really have to kind of, put that into practice. So I guess with a four man group, like you said, there's no, or there's not as much big picture tactical stuff. So without giving away your secret sauce on how you're going to restart the season, how does that like, I'm just so curious as to how you would coach in a situation like that. Cause I'm not in that, obviously, you know, our league is different. Well, there's uh, you know, the interesting thing is one of the requirements also is that for the most part, as much as we can, we want to keep guys together there they're together all the time. So if uh, a player's rooming with another player, one might be a goalkeeper, one might be a winger, right? Uh, we need to try to keep them in groups so that we limit the exposure of different people to different groups, you know? So it, it could get really interesting because you could have a group of four midfielders living together where you can actually get something a little bit more game-like done. And with another group, it's uh, – it's pretty position specific based on the fact that it's hard to put them together. So uh, we've been really creative in it. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of my staff. I mean, Nika and Chloe have been excellent in the, in the work that they've done. And obviously Ray helps us a lot. So we've been, it's been good, uh, I think, but we're all ready for bigger groups. I think we're ready to put on more tactical pieces. We get closer and, you know, we have a way that we want to play and we set that foundation during the preseason. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, how quickly we can get back with a, you know, four or four week lead into games. Yeah, I I sometimes forget how crazy of a situation it is for you and, and the rest of the members of the technical staff because here you are in a new city, 
new club, new people to work with, and then this crazy thing happens. And so you kind of have to create something new to begin with and then put it on hold and then recreate something new in a completely new environment for all of us. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated as to how you're doing that. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the final product and um, what that will look like. But I'm wondering if, if you feel like you have kind of a, a finger on the pulse of what the players are feeling and how they're responding to, to restarting and, and what that's looking like for them. Well, first I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm five months into a new job, uh, with, uh, a com not completely revamped team, but, a, but it's a pretty new team. Uh, I'm my philosophy and approach to the game is, is different than the, my predecessor. You know, I thought that the previous coach played a good brand of, of soccer, but where ours is a little different. So I think we set the foundation pretty well, you know, with the preseason time we had, but, you know, we have to remember that it's early days and, to really implement a style and a brand, it, it takes it takes really three seasons for me to do it correctly. So uh, we've I think we've done a good job so far, but people need to be patient in what they see from us. Uh, as it relates to the players in your question, I think that I think they buy into what we want to do, uh, but the fact that they haven't trained together in months and we're going to be asked in weeks to try to get them to to come together and, and, and as a new group of people is it's a it's a cool challenge. <laughs> But it's also something that you're going to have to have patience, both as a technical staff and as a fan base. You know, we're going to make mistakes all the way along the board, and the trick's going to be: do we limit them, and do we, uh, and do we take advantage of when the other teams uh, create mistakes for us? Yeah, I mean, it's, like we've said a million times on the show, it is a crazy, crazy situation. But I'm looking forward to seeing what what y'all come up with. Um, why I wanted to hit on that briefly, but I really want to switch gears a little bit. Um, a few weeks back, we asked for questions from our viewers, <laughs> and they delivered. So I would love to to get to a few of those questions. Um, okay. We'll we'll probably get through a few today. Um, some of them are soccer related. Some of them are not soccer related. I don't know if you saw some of the replies on Twitter or not, but um, but we'll we'll get right to those. So I, I've got a couple of questions for you and me to ask to to answer. Um, so the first one. Gordon Glover asks us, um, <laughs> what is the best metal band to come out in the last 10 years? And I will say this before we before we dive into it. I have absolutely no idea. So I'm going to lean on you big time for this one. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> because I'm not a metal fan at all. Um, mm. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, I could take this in 100 different directions. Um, I, I will say this, that... Uh, you know, in the eighties, you were kind of a rocker or a waver. You know, I was, I was young enough that I was around when the, you know, the term hip hop kind of came in and, you know, to put, you know, there was all, the, those were the genres as they were labeled, but you can't really put, you know, some rock and roll could be heavy metal, some, you know, the soul music. And I really like blues. I'm a John Lee Hooker fan. And, and, you know, that's not hip hop, but it's intermixed. And this is so many beautiful kinds of music. So, where I'm going with it is in the eighties, I, you kind of had to choose. Like I remember you had long hair and you were a rocker and you had sideways hair and coloring and you were a waver. And I was probably more of a rocker than a waver. And I, you know, I Metallica was my heaviest band at the time. And I was a Motley Crue fan and all the hair metal bands. And uh, as it circles back to your question, you know, uh, best new band, there's a lot of really awesome bands that are trying to to make their way uh into it but I, I here's where i'll go with it um i discovered five finger death punch you know years ago and i know they've been around for a while but it's a band that's probably had the most impact in the music scene because it crosses genres right they're on the radio and at the same time there there's a throwback to uh to, to to some pretty heavy underground bands and you know i i will give mika Olivara, my assistant, a lot of uh, props because he and I are both metalheads and rockers from the 80s. So we've been exchanging music, you know, and it, it, you know, I rekindled his love of Cold Chamber and and some some typo negative and bands back then. And he introduced me to some Finnish bands like Amona Marth. And, and I, uh, I've been kind of rocking out in my car because when you're a metalhead, a lot of times you, you, you there's not a lot of people in your family that want to listen to your music with you. So you know, that's a long-winded way of saying that I just I think there's a lot of really awesome bands that are that have come out, and 
you know, to say any new metal, I would have to go really underground and talk about bands that are just uh, people wouldn't necessarily know. So Gordon and I will have to have that uh, beverage and and uh, talk through some some power chords together. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I would I would pay to be a fly on the wall in you and Mika's car rides. <laughs> Just absolutely going at it to some some metal. That'd be hilarious. Um, All right, we'll we'll move on. So uh, this was a Twitter reply also. Arsenal fan 1940 asks, would you rather win the league unbeaten or win the league with a lot of points? And he adds, I know which one I would choose. So I'll answer that one first. So my guess is, you know, his Twitter handle is Arsenal fan 1940, and he knows that both of us are Liverpool supporters. my guess is he's referencing the Arsenal Invincibles versus this this iteration of the Liverpool team this year. I think the choice is pretty clear. No bias. Um, <laughs> I, I would a one million percent rather uh, accrue the most points in history than go unbeaten. I know that going unbeaten is a ridiculous achievement, and only one team has done it in the Premier League era. Um, but I think you know the table doesn't lie, and so if you if you accrue the most points, it means you're the best team. But that's that's my two cents. What do you think? Well, that's a true fan question and a fan answer by you and uh, the Wenger fan uh, that uh, asked us the question. I, I would say this: I think Arsenal's played a really good brand of soccer for a long time, and I, I'm a I'm a I'm very respectful of Arsene Wenger. But I think that in life, I think life lessons are learned and are more poignant when there's pain as opposed to pleasure, and without taking losses, you don't necessarily gain as much of the lesson. And I think that teams that, that uh, take some losses but find ways to win and, and gain the most points and win championships probably stand the test of time longer than teams that just fly. I mean, you take a team like Leicester, they win the Premier League, but it's really hard to sustain. And I know that they took their losses, but it was really a – a Cinderella run, you know, and I would say the same with that Arsenal team. I'm not taking anything away to go undefeated in the premier league is unbelievable, but is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? Are you going to keep winning trophies? Well, they, you know, the answer with Arsenal and you're seeing the answer with Liverpool. So that's my fan side of it. I, as a coach, I don't care. I, uh, in America, I want to make the playoffs and win the playoffs because that's what we do. Uh, if I was to coach in a single table system, I want to win every single game and get the most points. Uh, if you take losses, there's a lot of lessons in that. And uh, it's important to, to, to lose sometimes. You, you need to be humbled and you need to rework the, the, the success you're having. I love it. That's a good answer. I'm happy with that. I don't know if Arsenal fan 1940 will be happy with it, but I'm happy with it. <laughs> All righty. We'll get to this last one here. and It's kind of meta, which I like. Um, so this is a DM. Ben Ahrens asks, you can travel any amount of years forward or backward. How far do you go and in which direction do you travel? I'll let you take this one away first. This is a tricky one. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't want to get too deep on it, but I will say this. Uh, particularly as it relates to the current climate of our country right now, um, I say travel forward. And this is why. I think you look back to learn lessons on what not to do in life. But I don't think you can ever travel back and change what's happened. All you can do is bond together to move forward to make it better. You know, that relates to teams. It relates to, to, to people getting together as races. It, gets, it has to do with uh, the future of making things better because we all make mistakes. Uh, and mistakes have happened in history. And what you got to do right now is you got to join hands and say some things were really wrong. And we have an opportunity right now to correct it because just because something's been done a certain way, it doesn't make it right. And something always bothers me when people say, "You, you what's well, the way we've always done it? Well, if it isn't right, tear down the statue. If it isn't right, lock hands. If it isn't right, fund the things that should be funded, but do it with the vein that we're trying to make it better. And we take the good and the bad from the past. So I'm a, I'm a move forward guy, man. Uh, tomorrow's a new day. And if my team gets smashed on a Saturday, you can bet your butt that by Saturday at midnight, I'm already working on trying to make it better the next day. So that would be my best answer to that question. I think that's a spectacular answer to that question. Um, I would echo that wholeheartedly. I think that moving forward is super important. And, and like you said, in this current climate, it's something that needs to be done. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think we should move forward as well. Um, well, we'll wrap it up for the day on that uh, On that note. I really appreciate you answering those questions and, and talking us through the restart for 
the provisional restart for this upcoming USL League One season. Um, and I, I'm glad to have you back on the Coach's Corner this week. It was a, it was great talking to you. I'm looking forward to the next one. You know, well, we're uh, as a team and as a staff, we are super excited that we have some type of date to get ready for. Uh, we're super excited to represent the city of Richmond and uh, give an opportunity for people to come together. That's what this team is all about. That's what this club's all about. Uh, we're joyful, we're united, and we're authentic. And we bring different groups of people together. That's an important message. Uh, we're excited to start doing that. So thanks. Look forward to it. Absolutely. Thank you.